61A Lecture Number 18 Announcements Homework 5 is due tomorrow. The ANTS project is due next Thursday. You'll need to complete and submit phases 1 and 2 by Monday if you want full credit. And you can earn a bonus point for submitting by Wednesday. There's also an extra credit question on the project. Yes, if you want the bonus point for submitting early and the extra credit, then you need to have the extra credit done by Wednesday. Homework 5 is pretty long. I had several people in office hours asking me how do you get started on the last question called Gen Paths. How do you write a generator function anyway? Let's take a quick look at a couple of those. Here's a regular function. Takes in an integer n and tries to return one of its divisors greater than or equal to 2. So what are the divisors of 35? Well, they're 1 and 5 and 7. We're leaving 1 out of the picture, so if I try to get a divisor of 35, it will tell me that 5 is one of them. What if I want all of them? Well, then it's a good idea to yield. What yield does is keeps the function running after the first yield, which means we'll get all the divisors from 2 up to but not including n. So now if we ask for the divisors of 35, I get a generator object. But if I ask for its contents, for example by calling list, then I see all the divisors of 35. Or all the divisors of 20, not including 1 just because I left it out in my implementation. So oftentimes when you want to write a generator function to enumerate all things, you just worry about how to construct each one. Notice here I just yielded one of the divisors. Likewise, if I want to generate all the paths through a tree that end in some value x, then I just have to worry about yielding one path at a time. So let's say I instead I wanted to write a function that just returned one path. Here's a tree, zero at the root. There's two different ways to reach two, either zero two or zero four two, but in this implementation I just want to find one of them. How might I do that? Well, if it's the case that the label of t is x, then I just return a list containing x. If x is not the label, then I have to keep looking. I'll go through all the branches for b and branches of t, and I'll get the rest of the path to x by making a recursive call to a path on the branch. Now I have, for example, how to get to 0 and 2 if I follow the 2 branch, and if it's the case that there is a way of finding a 2 there, then I want to return a longer list, one that starts with label t and then is followed by the rest of the path. Let's see how we did. Oh, we passed all the tests. So a path through example tree to 3 goes 0, 2, 3, or to 2 goes to 0, 2, or 0 goes to 0. Now, our goal was not to just return one path, but to yield all paths. We need to make two changes. Instead of returning, we yield. But the second change is that when we make a recursive call to our new function, if we don't want a path, but we want to gen all the paths, then obviously like all this stuff would have to change. But we would also have to call gen paths, which doesn't just return the rest of the path. You get an iterator over rests of paths. That's what's different about the generator function. It gives you all the examples instead of just one. And how do you process an iterator? Well, you wouldn't say if that iterator, and you instead you would say for all the contents, all the rest of path examples in that iterator it's time to yield something. What do you yield? Well, just an example path. It's the same thing that you return. So I'm not going to show you exactly what the answer looks like because I want you to process all that information, but oftentimes a function to return just one example of something and a generator function to return all the examples of something are almost the same syntactically, you just have to be sure about the range of the recursive call. What kind of thing you get back is an iterator, and you have to make sure that instead of returning, you yield. I hope that helps.